am so excited because I get to tell you about my favorite person, and my favorite person is Jesus. And you're thinking, Mark, that's dopey. You told us that we're going to learn about Moses in the book of Exodus. And Moses is at the beginning of the Bible, the second book, way at the beginning. And, and, ex and Jesus is like the New Testament, sort of near the end, right? Wrong. Jesus is the whole Bible. From Genesis to Exodus to Leviticus to Numbers to Deuteronomy, all the way through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you find Jesus everywhere in the Bible. Jesus is the author of the Bible. Jesus is the subject of the Bible. Jesus is, is what the Bible is about. Jesus is the hero of the Bible. It's written for his glory. It's all about him. And I hope that we will spend five days in the book of Exodus, and we will see Jesus all through it. And that excites me a lot. So I hope you like it too. Pay attention. Prove that it's true that kids are smart. I know that you can get the stuff that we're going to teach this week. It's going to be great. All right. Who was here last year? Okay, so some of you. So last year, we studied from Noah to Abraham. And we saw Jesus in the life of Noah through Abraham. And, and, and we ended with Abraham sacrificing his son Isaac. And, and he was going to sacrifice him, but he didn't because God said, no! I'm going to make a nation out of that kid. Well, we're going, to, we're going to pick up there, and we're going to move on. And if you weren't here last year, it's okay. You can pick up a Bible and read it yourself, or I'll be glad to give you a highlights of it. Or you can go on YouTube and watch my videos from last year if you want. Um, but what we have was Abraham. God chose him, not because he was good, not because he was better than anyone else, but because God decided to choose Abraham and made a people out of him, the Hebrew people. The Hebrew people are still around today. It's amazing. All the great people of the world back then, they're all gone. But the Hebrew people are still around because God keeps his promises. He preserved a nation through his son Isaac and then through his son Jacob. And then Jacob had a son named Joseph. And then and, and, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, yeah, and Joseph. And he had a bunch of brothers and they all went to Egypt. And they did great. They were, they were friends with the king of, of Egypt. The king of Egypt's name was Pharaoh. Well, that was, wasn't his name. That was his title. And they got along swimmingly. However, Joseph and his brothers died. They got old. That generation disappeared. That Pharaoh died. And there rose another Pharaoh that did not have that relationship with the Hebrew people, didn't like the Hebrew people, didn't look after the Hebrew people, was scared of the Hebrew people because God blessed the Hebrew people. And that's, that's what I want for you. I want all of you to be blessed too, okay? And God blessed them and, and they multiplied and they did great. But the Pharaoh said, well, what? These, these people, these Israelites, these, these Jewish people, these Hebrew people, they're so big and powerful. What if they, they join up with my enemies? Then I'm in trouble. So what the Pharaoh decided to do was to make them into slaves. He, he assigned taskmasters over them to give them hard labor. They had to work really hard. They had to, they had to make bricks, and they had to plow the fields, and they had to take care of, of and build beautiful cities to Pharaoh. And, they had, and, and if, they, if they got out of line, well, a slave is not even like a person. You, don't even, you treat them like, like, a, like a piece of, like an animal. You can beat them. You can sell them. If you want to split a husband and a wife or children and sell the children to this person and sell the parents, you can do that. If you think they're not working hard this day, you can beat them and kill them. You do not want to be a slave. Yes, ma'am. Um, didn't he, like, take their children and, like, sacrifice them if I'm correct? We're going to get there. We're going to get there. And the Hebrew people were slaves for 400 years. So I need help. What's your name? Della, come on up. What color is my paint, Della? Black. Do you think I can make yellow letters of black paint? No. no? Well, blow on my brush. And maybe with Della's help, we're going to talk about someone that did something amazing through all this. If you look into the yellow boxes, you'll see letters formed from black paint. You see it? What does it say? Good. That's right. How about a round of applause for Della? She made me make yellow letters of black paint. God, had, he had a plan. He was going to do something. Because it is not good to be in slavery. Slavery is bad. Maybe they put you in a pit. Maybe you have to yeah, we'll put a head on him. And the, the Egyptian, he had a problem. Can you tell what the problem the Egyptian had? 
He doesn't have a head, but I can fix that. I'll, I'll paint the head on him. I'm an artist. I can do that. That's how you get ahead in life. Get it? Get ahead of that? All right, fine. So this guy, he's in the mud pit, and he's working because he's making bricks. And, uh, and, and maybe the, the Egyptian, he's allowed to, uh, to whip him with a whip and say, work harder. And he's allowed to do that because the, the, being a slave is bad. You do not want to be a slave. But I want you to understand that through all of this, God, he sees. He sees what's going on. He's got a plan. He's going to work out salvation, redemption for his people. It may not look like that. If you were a slave, imagine how, how hard that must be. Your father is a slave. Your father's father was a slave. They were slaves for 400 years. That means all they knew were slaves. Like there wasn't, you couldn't even say, well, remember great grandpa so-and-so, he used to be a, a car dealer or something? No, there wasn't, there were no car dealers, but there were no car dealers back then. But, but there was nobody that wasn't anything but a slave. That's all you were was hopeless. Your, your people were slaves. Everybody you know is a slave and you were under the oppression of the Egyptians. They were the strongest nation in the world. Hopeless, but God sees. God sees. And it gets worse because the Pharaoh gets so paranoid that he says, I want the Hebrews destroyed even more. And he tells the midwives, those are the, the, the women that help women give birth. And if you want to know how babies come from, ask your counselor how babies Ooh, come from. No. <laughs> but, Give me good stories tomorrow if anybody asks. All right, so he told the midwives when a, when a Jewish woman gives birth, if they give birth to a, to a girl, fine, whatever. But if they give birth to a boy, I want you to kill it. Throw it in the Nile River. Because the, the, the Pharaoh was so afraid of the Israelites having a redeemer rise up to, to, to free them. And in this time when they were killing, Hebrew, can you imagine killing little babies, beautiful little babies? You know what's awful? They kill babies today. Like in this, uh, yeah. In this country, they call it health care. They call it women's rights. You know what? People, people have the ability to do horrible things. And even you little guys can understand that. We live in a world where people do bad things. It's called stinky, inner, nastiness. S-I-N. There was sin back then, there's sin today. That's why we're teaching this. Because not only can we learn about history, but we learn about us. When we read the Bible, we're gonna learn about what God has to say to us and how we live and what we do when we live in a culture that is sinful and does wicked things. Now maybe our culture doesn't do as wicked things as Egypt did, but we're getting close. And what, how are we gonna live? And there was a young boy who was born to the Hebrews, didn't even have a name. Now if a baby boy is born, What's supposed to happen to that baby boy, according to the Pharaoh? Right, take your finger, do this. And there was a mother, her name was Yochebed. How about that for a name, Yochebed? <laughs> I love the Hebrew, oh, Hebrew alphabet. What? And with great faith, she wanted to save her beautiful baby boy. And so did God. God wanted to save that boy too. And even though she loved that child, she knew if anybody discovered that child that she was keeping in secret, they would kill that child. So with, the Bible says with great faith, she took some reeds and she made something unusual. She made a basket. And usually with a basket, you put fruit in a basket or you put crops or something like that. But she put her baby boy in the basket and then put the basket in the Nile River. Yes, the same river that, where they toss the babies to die. And the Nile River is a very dangerous river. It's one of the largest rivers in the world, even to this day. Over 200 people every year, today, die in the Nile River from crocodiles. Okay? So imagine how many people died of crocodiles back then, before they had modern conveniences. It was a very dangerous river. It's got lots of rapids and rocks and all kinds of things. Hippopotamuses kill a lot of people in the Nile River. I know, we think hippopotamus is really fun. We play that, you know, that game with the marbles, and you press a little button and, you know, what's that called? Hungry hippo. Hungry hippo. hippo. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, but no, hippopotamuses can be really nasty. There are, can we get to yours in a bit? 
there are a ton of different water snakes in the Nile River that could easily have slithered into that basket and murdered that baby boy. The black mamba is in Egypt, one of the most dangerous, most venomous snakes in the world. This, but the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, I want to read this to you. Sometimes babies need to be given up by their parents. It's not nice, but it happens. There's different reasons why that happens. Sometimes, in this case, a baby had to be given up because of an evil government. Because Egypt wanted to kill that baby. And the mother, because she loved her baby, she had no choice but to give her up. Sometimes people give up their babies because they can't take care of the baby. There's all different reasons why. But this is what um, the Bible says about Yochebed. It says in Hebrews 11, chapter 23, it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. So it was by faith that Moses' parents did this. He would soon be named Moses. And I want you to know that even though the Nile probably should have killed him, he should have hit the rocks in, in, a, in a capsize, or, or a crocodile should have used his tail to knock that baby over, or you know, all those things could, really should have happened. But I want you to know that when God has a plan, God Can we read what that says? God protects. God protected this baby. And not only that, check this out. No, none other than the daughter of Pharaoh himself was by the side of the Nile with her handmaidens. And she and her handmaidens had a big problem. You know what their problem was? What? They don't have any heads. That's right. But I will fix that. We'll paint some heads. And since they're women, we'll do pretty hair. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the daughter of the pharaoh, the princess, said to one of her handmaidens, hey, there's something over there floating around in the, in the water. Why don't you go get it? So her handmaiden went into the water to, to get what they floated right to her. I mean, how perfect is that? Could have gone so many different places. And she said, my lady, you'll never guess what's in here. It's not a basket of fruit. <laughs> it's not a basket of, of goods and clothes. It's a baby boy. And she figured out that it was one of the Hebrew boys. Now, if she's a good Egyptian, what should she do with that baby? Keep it. Kill it. Kill it. Or if she's not going to kill it, at least give it to one of the guards so he could kill it. That's what they were supposed to do. That's what the daughter of Pharaoh should have done. But God protected this baby. God protected. It was supernatural. It was a miracle that instead this baby found favor in the eyes of the daughter of Pharaoh. And not only, not only did the daughter of Pharaoh not kill the baby or have the baby killed, but said, I'm going to adopt this baby. This baby's going to be my child now. And I'm going to name this baby... Moses, which means I drew him out of the water. And she did. Ah, I got black paint on the hands. I don't like it when that happens. But I'm willing to do it for your sake. All right. How do you do that? How do I do what? How do, I, how do you manage to get paint on your hands? Well, I'm using paint, and it is wet, uh -huh. and it gets messy. Uh -huh. And so, it get this, this is so cool. Because remember, Moses' mother, his biological mother, had to... Had to give up his, her baby, but babies need feeding. They need to nurse, they need to get milk from their mom. And not just any woman can do that, you had to have just given birth in order to do that. And if you have questions about how that works, talk to your counselor. So, so the princess of Egypt, she said, I'm gonna get one of the Hebrews women to nurse my baby for me, and she picked the actual biological mother of Moses. So Moses' mother got to share that special time for the next many months to actually have that bonding time of nursing her own baby before she gave her up for adoption formally to the princess of Egypt. Moses did not grow up as a Hebrew, even though he was a Hebrew. He grew up as an Egyptian. And not just any Egyptian, but he grew up as a prince of Egypt. He was the son of the princess of Egypt. He was a powerful man. He was taught in all the wisdom of Egypt, the greatest wisdom of the, of the world at that time. He was, he was taught uh, at the athleticism of Egypt. He had anything he wanted. He lived in the palace. 
He was, he, was, he was in the grace of Pharaoh, the greatest king of the world. That's how he grew up. And one day when Moses got older, he, he learned that he was a Hebrew, in fact. And he wanted to go out and see what, what like anybody else would be curious. He wanted to know, what, what's going on with my people? And he saw the slavery of his people. He saw how they were, how they were treated badly. He saw an Egyptian taskmaster whipping a poor Hebrew man. <laughs> Violently. And Moses was horrified. He hated this. And Moses being brash and arrogant and strong, he knew exactly what to do. He took... An I, I'm, I'm going to paint. I don't know exactly what he used, but I'll paint a sword. The Bible doesn't say. It just said that he murdered that Egyptian. Now, I have a question for you. Which one of these men, the Hebrew slave, the Egyptian, or Moses, is a sinner? All of them. All of them? Who said all of them? You were here last year when I was teaching, weren't you? That's right. You wicked son. Oh, that's good. Most people say the Egyptian's a sinner, and that's true. Because it's wrong to treat people like cattle. But the Hebrew slave is a sinner too. Well, what did he do wrong? Well, maybe he didn't do anything wrong here, but we all sin. Everybody tells lies. If you lie once, you're a liar. If you take one thing that doesn't belong to you, you're a thief. If you hate somebody, Dick Cross says, I see, he sees you as a murderer. See, we've all sinned. Everybody is guilty Us. of stinky inner nastiness, including Moses, the Egyptian person. Moses specifically was, was guilty of murder. And murder is bad. So if your parents say, hey, what did you learn in chapel or camp? You can say, I learned that murder is bad. And they'll say, how profound. I'm so glad you went to chapel to learn that murder is bad. Yes. But murder is bad. And they're all sinful. And here's the deal. Moses was strong. He was powerful. He thought that everybody was going to rally behind him. He even went to see the Hebrews the next day and he saw two of them fighting with each other. And he said, you guys are brothers. Why are you, you're your fellow slaves. Why are you fighting with one another? And one of them says, what are you going to do? Kill me like you did the Egyptian yesterday? And oh boy. Moses knew he was in trouble. People knew. They knew what he did. And even though he was a prince of Egypt, you're not allowed to kill Egyptians. In fact, the Pharaoh wanted to kill Moses now because he had murdered an Egyptian. You can't do that. So Moses became, he went from being a prince to being a fugitive. You know what a fugitive is? A fugitive is someone who's running away from the law and has to live in hiding. Someone that's, that's guilty of something or people think they're guilty and he doesn't want to get caught, so he runs away and he gives up your life. And that's what Moses did. He ran into the wilderness far away to a, a, a land called Midian. And there he met the Midianite people. And he met a, a woman. And they got married. And they had to deal with these, these creatures that you sometimes deal with that out in the wilderness. They're, they're dirty. They smell bad. They come into your house. They open your refrigerator. They eat food. Without, they eat it right in the refrigerator. They don't even get themselves a plate. And then they just leave and have eaten in the fridge. And they leave crumbs everywhere when they're in the bathroom. They, and they're done with toilet paper. They don't get a new roll, even though the new rolls are right there on the shelf. You know these creatures are all Children. That's right. Moses had children. He was a, 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 he was a shepherd for a long time. 40 years. Remember, he went from being a prince of Egypt to being just a, 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 a lowly shepherd that nobody would have known him. Outside of his little neighborhood there in the, in the, in the hills, in the mountains, nobody would have even known his name. From being the, the prince of Egypt to being a lowly nobody. And that is when God chose a leader. You got it. A leader. Because sometimes the world says, oh, you want to be a leader? You got to be strong and brash and arrogant and powerful. And God says, no, you need to be humble and teachable and workable and able to learn. And that's what 40 years in the wilderness did to Moses. Turned him from brash to humble. And one day Moses was up in the, in, the, in the mountain, the mountain of God. And he saw something unusual. He saw that he had no head. Let's put a head on him. But then he saw that there was a bush 
and the bush was on fire. Now that's not unusual. Fire, bushes go on fire from time to time. You know, it's, it's very hot out there, very, uh, a lot of, you know, the weather could be different ways and, and lightning maybe could strike. But there's reasons why that happens. That's not unusual. What was unusual about this one is that typically what happens to the leaves of the bush when it's on fire? It burns up, right, and it, it, it leaves all kinds of like ash and nastiness. And but these, this, he saw that there was a bush on fire, but the leaves were not consumed. They were perfectly green, perfectly intact. That what happens when God changes the rules of science just for a moment? What's that called? Miracle. It's a miracle, just like when Mo God protected Moses in the bush. That's a miracle. And God led Moses right to the princess of Egypt. That's a miracle. And had the princess of Egypt have compassion on him instead of giving him over to the, to the, uh, to the guards. That's a miracle. And here's another miracle. And out of the burning bush came a voice that said, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes, your sandals, for this is holy ground. You know, slaves, servants took off their shoes in the, in the, in the presence of their master. You see where Moses has gone to from being from being a master to now he's taking off his shoes in reverence to another master. Moses is a changed man now. Maybe even changed a little bit too much. And the voice from the burning bush says, I am the Lord. I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob. I have seen the plight of my people and I am going to do something about it. I'm gonna dribble is what I'm gonna do. No, my paint is dribbling. My paint is drooling. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's a D. I have seen the pain of my of my people, and I'm gonna do something about it. Because God, when he's gonna do something, it's up to him who he uses. Sometimes he uses the most unlikely people. And that encourages me because I'm a most unlikely person. And I bet a lot of you are the are most unlikely people. God doesn't always pick the strongest and the handsomest and the smartest and the richest and the most talented. God uses regular, ordinary people. He uses a little shepherd to destroy a giant. He uses a, a nobody carpenter to build a boat to save all of humanity. He uses a humble sheep herder to save his people from Egypt. He can use you as well. You don't have to be the biggest or the baddest or the most amazing. You just need to be willing to be used by God. I find that encouraging. Now remember, Moses used to be like brash. He was going to take on the Egyptian. He, was, he just was going to kill Egyptians and take over. That was 40 years ago when he was a young man. Now, God says, I want to send you, Moses, to the king of Egypt. And he's like, what? 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 No, 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 now excuse number two. They're not going to believe what I'm going to do. He says, Moses, take your staff. Throw it on the ground. He does. It turns into a serpent. He says, pick up the serpent by its tail. Picks it up, turns into a staff again. What's that called? A miracle. A miracle. He says, Moses, put your hand inside your, your, your tunic, inside your, your, your clothing, and pull it out. And his hand was leprous. It was white. It, was, it had a horrible skin disease instantly. He said, put it back in. Take it out again. And now it was perfectly healed again. God said, they will listen to you. I will do great signs and wonders. And then Moses is coming up with more excuses. Okay, maybe they will listen to me, but, but uh, I don't know your name. What am I supposed to say? Who, who do I say is sending you? And it's like, I love it. Like, you're talking to the God of the universe, the one who created time, and you say, what's your name? I mean, that's like, say, like what did Moses expect? Oh, I'm Frank. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Sally. Um, so God gave a sort of a strange answer, but it makes sense if you think about it. God says, tell them that I am who I am sent you. See, God's not like a name like you and I. God just is. I am. It's like he, he's not I will be. He's not I was. He is. God is past. He's present. He's future. I am means... 
the eternal one. He's not like the gods of the Egyptians, the false gods of the Egyptians. They're like, well, they have a, they have a god of the water, they have a god of the sky, they have a god of the, of the crops, they have the god of fertility, they have a god of all of that. No, this is I am the eternal one. I'm the one and only. I'm the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am eternity. Tell them I sent you. Look, in Exodus chapter 3, I love this. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. Guys, you are old enough, all of you, even the youngest ones, and I don't like this, what I'm about to say, but I know it's true, that even at your young age, you've experienced hardship. Maybe, you, maybe not you personally, but I know, I'm not an idiot, I know that you've experienced perhaps, or some of your favorite people have experienced divorce, have experienced death, have experienced sickness, mm -hmm. loss, people ghosting you, people treating you badly. I want you to know, God sees you. God sees you. He has a plan. It may not be the plan you come up with, and it may not be the timing that you come up with, but know this, God sees you. He's got it covered. The Lord said to him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jebusites now live. Now I happen to know that you've never heard of these people, the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hittites, and Jebusites. Understand, those were powerful nations at one point. They were very powerful. They don't exist anymore. But the Hebrew people still do. You know why? Because there's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who's living and active. I, I heard someone say, how do you know that God really exists? And uh, a theologian said, the reason why I know that God exists is because of the Jewish people. And, and so the atheist said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, have you ever seen a Hittite in New York City? No, you didn't. They all disappeared. But God's Jewish people are still around. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. And Moses, who was once strong and brash, is now, he's coming up with excuses. I can't speak well. I don't, I don't have any power. Oh, okay, you're going to do miracles for me? All right. I don't even know your name. Oh, you're going to tell me your name? All right. And then finally he just says, will you send someone else? He said that great prayer that many of us have prayed, Lord, here am I, send someone else. Because sometimes we get scared. And even when we're scared, God can still use us. I love that God didn't say, oh, forget it, Moses, I'm gonna smite you, you're, you're nothing, I'm sick of you complaining. God is so good. He says, you know what? Your brother Aaron happens to speak very well. So here's what you're gonna do. Aaron's gonna be like, like almost like a prophet for you. You're gonna speak the words to Aaron, Aaron will speak it to Pharaoh. And you both will be like a god to Pharaoh. Now, they're not god to Pharaoh in the sense of they don't, they didn't, Moses and Aaron didn't create the universe, but meaning they're going to speak the words of God to Pharaoh. How good is God? He takes somebody like Moses, says, look, I'm the one that makes people speak. I'm the one that does miracles. I'm the one that does all this. And Moses still like, that's someone else. And God says, no, I want to use you. Because... God calls. Sometimes God calls us to do things we don't want to do, what we're afraid to do. Sometimes God, maybe at your, even at your age, God's called you to do something you're afraid to do. You know, as, as we all have to do things. We have to clean our room. We have to take out the trash. We can't light dogs on fire. I know. But sometimes, you know what's a hard thing to do that God calls us to do? How about, how about apologize when we're wrong? That's hard to do, isn't it? Yeah. How about tell somebody, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing, I need help. That's rough. How about telling somebody, you know what, I don't really believe in Jesus, but I think I should, can you help me with that? Sometimes God calls us to do things, but he will help us. He helped Moses by sending him Aaron. And Moses, there he is. There's Moses. And here, you need him to have a head. He's 
Aaron. 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 Moses and Aaron went to a very scary place. They were going to go. Remember, Moses ran away from this place 40 years ago because he was going to get killed for being a murderer. He went to a scary place called Egypt. And he was going to tell the king of Egypt, who basically is the king of the world, he's going to tell the king of Egypt, let my people go. Nobody commands the king of Egypt to do anything. The king of Egypt commands you what to do. You tick him off, he'll have you killed. And he could have Moses killed anyway if he recognizes him. It's crazy. Moses is going to go before the throne of Pharaoh and tell him what to do? Let, my, let your slaves go? Man, I wonder what's going to happen to Moses. You guys want to know what happens next? Yeah. And I will tell you tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. So until then, pray about what God might be calling you to do. Because you could be a great leader that God will use to change the world. Maybe God will call you to do something. Maybe just by leading a family one day. That's a great thing to do. Maybe by standing up at school. And when people are saying Christianity is stupid, maybe God will call you to say, no, it's not stupid. I believe in it. And there's good reason. There's good evidence. Maybe when, when, when people uh, make fun of your faith, when people act in a way that's different than the values you get taught in the Bible, you'll stand up and say, no. Whatever God calls you to do, he'll do amazing things through you. Because God doesn't necessarily call amazing people. He takes regular people and does amazing things through them. He'll do it through you. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for every young man and woman who's here tonight. Thank you that you care about them, that you love them, and that you will work through them, through your Holy Spirit, just like you worked through Moses. You humble him. And you used him mightily. I pray, God, that we will learn from the life of Moses and that we will learn what you have to tell us. That we'll grow in our faith. That we'll live by faith, just like Moses' parents did. By giving up their child, by doing the hard thing. Moses went before the king of Egypt hard. It takes faith to do that. I pray, God, that everybody here will live by that faith as well. Keep us safe. Help us to have a great time at camp. We love you and praise you. And all the happy campers at Camp Fair Haven say... Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Talk to you tomorrow. Hey everybody, this is Mark. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please click like and subscribe to the channel. Please visit our website, loop-15.org. We have tons of free resources. Everything's free to help you to become a better, more effective ambassador for Jesus Christ. There's also information at loop-15.org about what my family and I do as missionaries here in New England and really everywhere through the internet. Please share these resources with other people you know through social media. And may God bless you as you take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. We love Jesus. How can we not share him with others? Have a great day.